Up until recently, mainstream archaeologists have believed that the oldest ruins in the world are the ones located in Malta. Amongst those are the temples of Gentia, on the island of Gozo. And our archaeologists say that these are built around 7000 BC. Also on Malta is the Gardalum Cave, meaning Cave of Gardalum. And this cave is believed to be evidence of a big cataclysm, a huge wave that wiped out the whole island. At that time, Malta must have been a series of islands and a land ridge to Sicily. More signs of cataclysms having taken place are the remains of pygmy elephants and hippopotami that were found in the cave. But now, mainstream archaeologists are claiming that the oldest ruins in the world are at Gebekli Tepe, located in southern Turkey. Archaeologists say that these megaliths were built in around 10,000 BC. Some of these megaliths are T-shaped and have carvings of animals like foxes, serpents, and vultures. Some time after this site was built, it was purposely buried. But now, it's being excavated by German archaeologists. But this is where it really gets interesting. The largest megaliths that we know of are built elsewhere, in the city of Baalbek, Lebanon. What's most interesting about this site isn't the Roman temple standing out, but the giant platform of blocks that is built around it. And each of these blocks weigh about a 1,000 tons some of them reaching 1,200 tons, which are found around the quarry. When looking at these immense blocks, the question that first comes to mind, is, why and how they were built in the first place? Especially considering the perfect geometry, besides the weight and volume. The way mainstream archaeologists explain this, is as follows. The builders, who were believed to be Roman, would build a cage around these blocks. And in their blocks, they would cut small holes, shaped like an hourglass. And then, they would put similarly shaped hourglass inserts, into those holes. And then they would connect ropes from the inserts to the cages. After which they would pull on the ropes, resulting in the block being lifted, and standing upward. However, this explanation, raises the question what motive those people could have, to undertake a task requiring so much time and effort, and being so inefficient. And this led people to speculate about alternative theories, such as the use of anti-gravity, or levitation. Another example of similar blocks, is the site of Abidas, in Egypt. Next to the temple, the government conducted excavations in order to examine these stones. As you can see, just like with Baalbek, these blocks have the same precise cut shapes, and the knobs and holes holding them together. Apart from the size, Something else that is remarkable about this place, is the absence of hieroglyphs on the blocks. Or other remains that indicate the presence of Egyptians. Suggesting this site being built by another ancient civilization. And it doesn't end there. There is also the place called Cusco, in Peru. And here as well, you find these huge blocks that are perfectly shaped to fit together. What you see in this image, is the so-called stone of 12 angles. And you will even find multiple buildings consisting of these type of polygonal rocks. Here we have another similar ancient site. These stones have recently been excavated in northern Greece. It has the same jigsaw pattern, that fits together perfectly. Above the city of Cusco, lies a giant fortress, called Soxaywaman. This is where the Incas and the Spanish once fought a battle. And if you look at it, considering the huge field, it could be a suitable place for an aircraft to land. Here, we again have huge polygonal shaped blocks, perfectly fitted together. It's an almost indestructible type of construction. When the Spanish got there, they actually couldn't believe what they saw. They thought that it must have been built by the devil. But it's not just Soxay Waman itself. Around the site, you have these very odd looking structures, where the stones are almost upside down or these perfectly cut stones, or this, what looks like a slide. Somehow this whole rock, was smoothly carved for humans to slide on. Who built these impossible laser cut stone structures? And why? There seems to be no logical reason for someone, whatever tool was used, to make these kind of structures. Or this tunnel like thing here. A human barely can fit in. But yet they made them. And what's with the random square shaped hole besides it? Seems legit. Each thing you see more unnatural and making less sense than the other. Mainstream archaeologists say that the Incas didn't know about the wheel, and writing. 
that they're a primitive culture, but at the same time, that they could fabricate, and move these blocks, weighing 200 tons, and putting them together perfectly fitting. All of this allegedly with muscle power and primitive tools. The story continues, at the famous Machu Picchu. Number one tourist spot of South America. Machu Picchu, is, as we have seen with Cusco, built partially out of megaliths. Huge rocks, perfectly cut to fit on top of, and, next to each other. And among the mysteries, is the name itself. Machu Picchu likely isn't the actual name of a city. Research suggests, that, it was originally named, Huayna, Picchu. Meaning, Young, Pyramid. After the smaller mountain at the site. And that the interpretation of past visitations, made it develop into Machu Picchu. Meaning, Old, Pyramid. After the larger peak. This is another picture of a rock construction at Machu Picchu. And as you can see, they have these lichen patches all over them, which is an indication of a very old age. Yet mainstream archaeologists claim that these rocks are built just 100 years before the Spanish arrived there. In contrast to what must have been thousands of years. Also in Peru, is a place called Olentitambo. When tourists arrive here, they walk up the stairs seen here, and have a beautiful view on the valley. But what you also find at the top of these stairs, are more megaliths. Here we have those megaliths. And as you can see, Unsurprisingly, the same structural pattern reappears. With their perfect straight laser cut shapes, to fit together perfectly, and the striking knobs. This is another view of the wall. And as you see, the stones have lichen patches. Indicating old age. And if you look closely at it, especially focusing at those detailed corners and edges, it seems like an impossible task to accomplish. And the mainstream archaeologists believe that that is what explains it that the ancient Incas have carved and polished the rocks by a hand and hammer. If you walk a bit further on the top of the hill, you arrive at a place looking like this. Another place where you find giant red granite blocks, spread over the place. And of particular interest, is this wall. Besides the huge rocks, what makes this construction unique, are these very thin sheets of granite between the rocks. If you move a bit further to the right, Across the corner, you will see this. It looks like each example has its unique variation. With these rocks, you see this odd filling with smaller stones. And the mainstream archaeologists simply put this down to the way they built this, but only at this rock. If you look at these rocks, it may seem that an extraterrestrial civilization, with more advanced technology must have built this. And this idea will be met with skepticism by other groups. But keep in mind that this formation has been here all the time in the same formation. And no civilization has been able to move one of them. Not even the Incas. Another particularly interesting feature that you find on some of these rocks, are these so-called keystone cuts. After those cuts are made, molten metal is poured into it. And they can only make a construction, if there is another rock that fits into it. So the idea is that by connecting multiple rocks this way, they can be held together and form a stable construction. The problem with this however, is that the rocks need to lay horizontally for the metal to be put in, not vertically. Looking down at the valley from above, we have a view of this pyramid-like structure. Mainstream archaeologists explain the construction of this, by a group of thousands of men working together. They supposedly collected the giant rocks that make up this pyramid, and placed them together in the right location. The problem with this theory however, is that they can't tell where all those men must have been standing, after crossing the river and began the building. And how they moved the rocks over the river in the first place. Next place of interest, is the quarry at the other side of the Urubamba River. What's found here, are the many square shaped blocks that are spread across the field. And what's of particular interest about these rocks, are the odd looking cuttings. It looks like it has been sawn. This must have been an incredible powerful and sophisticated technique for those people living then to cut a rock this size. The rocks then to be left abandoned, may make one theorize if the cuttings were made during the collection of the rocks, to determine if the quality was sufficient for their purpose. Walking a bit further, something else comes into view. Something, of a whole new level. If you're getting bored of all the square shaped rocks at this place, what about? This? 
with its smooth shape and well-made circle hole right in the center, one could only think of a giant wheel as its purpose. Yet, we're supposed to believe that the wheel wasn't invented in the Inca times. If we look back at Cusco, there is the temple called Coracancha, meaning, the Golden Temple. And inside are some interesting features as well. Built inside, are these structures resembling some sort of entrance. And unsurprisingly, made with these large perfectly shaped and fit together blocks. But these are not the most intriguing doors of them all. One of them has some type of cuttings all over it. And are made very detailed and placed symmetrical to each other. Strongly resembling some type of use. And not even speaking of what type of advanced machine would be capable to do this to those massive rocks. Moving west of the Altiplano Plateau, on top of a hill, lies the place of Cutimbo. Slightly below the top, there is this rock that most will overlook, but it has some peculiar features. When looking at it, you'll see something is not adding up. It has a horizontal line through the middle, very straight. And beneath that line, the rock is as smooth as if it has been polished. As if someone drew the line to indicate what part of the rock needed to be smooth. But for what reason? Looking at the structures of Cutimbo, we have the impossible seeming rocks again, fitted together. Additionally, these rocks have some carvings of animals as well. Animals that the carvings resemble are serpents, pumas, and mountain lions. The puzzling thing is, that, to carve these figures, one needs to cut away all the rock around the animal, while maintaining the shape. What's more, this phenomena of serpent carvings is not unique to Cutimbo. At various ancient sites around the world, serpents are cut in similar large rocks. Examples include, Cusco, and, the Yazidi Temple in Iraq. Back to Peru. Next to the site of Cutimbo, lies Lake Titicaca. And one of the hills around the lake, has a very peculiar feature. This hill has a straight wall, which is called Aramumuru, meaning Gate of the Gods. And inside this wall, which itself is somehow carved, is a door-shaped hole. How was it built, and for what purpose? And carvings of this kind are not exclusive to Aramumuru. In Egypt for example, at the Giza Plateau, we see a similar door-shaped hole, with no apparent purpose. Throughout history, there have been many sightings of UFO activity at Lake Titicaca. Some of them coming out of the water and flying away. And it so happens that beneath the surface of this lake, ruins have been discovered by divers. And when the divers went there exploring the surface, reports were made of not just ruins, but also of a golden obelisk. Another mystery of the lake are the seahorses that have been discovered. And this is something that biologists can't explain, since these animals are not supposed to live here. They are supposed to live in the tropical parts of the oceans. And here they are, in a lake, in the Andes. The British writer, James Churchward, who was not, the inventor of stainless steel, that was Harry Brearley, wrote a book titled, The Lost Continent of Mew. In the book he proposed the theory that the continent of South America used to be a lower altitude, around sea level. This allowed the area we now know as the Amazon, to be a large sea, connecting to the ocean. This also included Lake Titicaca, which Churchward said to be part of a canal, being connected to the ocean as well. And the continent at the height as we now know, being the result of a pole shift. That caused the lake and sea to reduce in size, with the latter being left as the rivers of the rainforest. We're not finished with Lake Titicaca yet. This however takes us to Bolivia. Close to the city of La Paz. Located near the south of the lake, is the site of Tiwanaku. And standing out, is the impressive megalith named, Gate of the Sun. It was once hit by an earthquake. As you can see there is a straight crack through the roof. Yet the structure managed to remain as if it was built to have the rocks fit together in this position. As if they had some advanced knowledge of the impact of earthquakes, implementing it in the construction. There are clues that the site of Tiwanaku, once was a factory for refining metals. Such as gold, silver, copper, and bronze. The site was excavated in the 1920s, and it was then that these statues were dug up. Some of them with a length of 30 to 40 feet. Or 9 to 12 meters. We're still around the same location, and another excavation site has revealed something entirely different. Yet nonetheless interesting. At Tiwanaku, 
there is a pyramid called Akapana. And at the base of it, you can see these peculiar tiny holes, almost looking like miniature tunnels. It appears that these were used as tunnels to direct water. A system of canals used for the city, with the water originating from the lake. This particular statue at Tiwanaku has some mysterious features. Unlike other depictions of humans in this region, this person has a mustache and a beard. And this contradicts the idea that indigenous Americans didn't have facial hair in that quantity. Secondly, the person is holding its hands in the so-called tiki position. And this gesture is well known in places such as Tahiti and New Zealand. That leaves the question open to what could explain these distant connections in ancient times. This is a reconstruction of the Akapana Pyramid, from before the Spanish discovered it and dug it up in search of treasures. And what you see on the top is a pool of water. This was used as a reservoir, and pumped through the different canals inside the pyramid. These are the canals mentioned earlier, that were used to refine the various metals using the water. Not speaking of the way all that water would be pumped up there in the first place, since the climate in that area can't account for that amount. Another intriguing ancient coincidence, if it is a coincidence, involve the reed boats used on Lake Titicaca. Just as with the tiki gesture, these boats have historical production locations around the world. This includes Morocco, Egypt, and Easter Island. Some interesting features of these reed boats are the shallow draft, making it able to sail over coral reefs. And when it gets punctured, it easily stays afloat. Moving to the final South American site, Pumapunku. Unpredictably, this site also contains a lot of blocks weighing hundreds of tons, laying there in all kind of random positions. And another returning phenomenon mentioned before, are the keystone cuts in the rocks. What makes these activities even more puzzling, is the size of some of the rocks on which they occur. Remember that the purpose of the cuts was supposedly to pour metal in them to hold multiple blocks together. But now, weigh in that they are found on these rocks that are on itself impossibly large to make let alone in a perfectly cut shape. The site where we saw this earlier was Olentaytambo. And the thing here is, that mainstream archaeologists say that Olentaytambo is made by the Incas. But at the same time the mainstream admits that Tiwanaku is pre-Inca, and thousands of years old. Concluding that these sites are all pre-Inca. With Pumapunku, it's not just the nature of the rocks. Also mind-boggling, is the ongoing variety of rocks showing how much was possible there. You have the many different shapes, some perfectly straight with few sides, and others having very complex, or total randomly made shapes. Some lay flat on the ground, and others, totally standing up straight. And in some cases, strangely piled together. With all this complex shaped work and fine details, on megaliths weighing thousands of tons, it clearly must have been made with some advanced power tool. And its purpose some form of decoration. Although mainstream archaeologists are saying they are just bashing this out, with a stone hammer in their hand. And making it perfectly smooth. And all of those decorations would be totally unnecessary and time wasting, especially if it was such a very difficult thing to do. One of the final more specific examples. The rocks seen here are some of many similar examples. How could these perfectly smooth holes just appear in all those giant blocks? Someone with a powered saw went there and perfectly cut it along. And then, all these small holes must have been drilled with a powered tool. And tests have been done with multiple people going there, and trying themselves with strong but unpowered tools. And no holes appeared. This, is a block at Tiwanaku. And just take a good look at the type of rock. And the enormous detailed shapes. Just how? How could this have been done in those ancient times? This here is another case that stands out. Not that everything here doesn't stand out. But the interesting aspect of this is, the smooth curved part. Again does it not raise the theory of advanced tools, but the possible purpose for this shape. And this was supposedly all done by simply smashing an ancient hammer on it. What you see here, are two of the megalithic doors. The two holes you see, were used to have some sort of poles inserted in them, in order to stand straight. 
The same technique can be spotted with these larger doors, right at the popular H-shaped stones. The best location I have saved for the end. Iran. This is the famous Persepolis. And here as well, it has been determined that the same door technique was used. And here you clearly can see how it is all one single huge piece of stone, that had to be lifted. Not to speak about all the detailed decorations that took so long to carve on them. It would only have taken one small slip, and those would be ruins in a few seconds. This, is a diagram of such a door. And you can guess how difficult the construction must have been. And this was all cut out of an even larger rock. All done by hand, with a hammer and chisel. And taking into account all the details and the measurements, which must have been exactly correct each time. In order to have the whole construction fit together.